Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Who am I kidding? Gentlemen and also gentlemen. There's like 2% of my, my viewership that's women or something like that. Hey, ladies, uh, thank you. Thank you for the support. I did this last year. I'm doing it again this year. It's time to pit the top five fragrances from 2021 against the top five fragrances from 2020. See which ones are better this year's or last year's. Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Scents. Hope that you're doing well. So I determined this the exact same way as last year. I went to Fragrantica and I sorted by most popular fragrances released for men for 2020 and 2021 and pitted the top five against each other to see which I think is best. So let's jump into it. Let's check these out. Now, one thing before I jump into this, the rankings, those are gonna change as time goes. The top five when I did it last year for 2020, that's not the same top five for 2020 now because it's really based on Fragrantica's algorithm of how many people are voting and all this other stuff. I mean, who knows how algorithms work? Nobody. But uh, this is the top five from each year as of this video. A year from now, maybe one fragrance falls out of favor, people don't like it as much and it drops in popularity. You know how it goes. Oh boy. So the number five from each year is gonna be matched up against each other. Then the number four, the number three, the number two, and the number one. First up, number five from 2020 is Eros Eau de Parfum. Now I personally like Eros Eau de Parfum a bit more than the Eau de Toilette. It still has that sweetness. It still has that, that commanding nature to it. It's got good performance. It's a big compliment puller, but I do find it a, a little bit more versatile than the Eau de Toilette. So this one, as of right now, number five most popular fragrance released in 2020, and that's going up against Stronger With You, Absolutely, from Emporio Armani. Now, something pretty interesting about this, Stronger With You, Absolutely, not really easy to find in America. Like you can't go to your, your local fragrance store and scoop this up or smell it. Basically you have to order it online and uh, typically discounters are sold out of this, but there are a few places you can find it usually. I was gonna say find it really consistently, but uh, a little hit or miss. Assuming I can find somewhere to scoop this up right now though, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll do that for all these bad boys. But Stronger With You, absolutely. This one has rum in it, so you get this little bit of boozy sweetness that mixes along with that sort of caramel, toffee, glazed chestnut vibe that you're gonna pick up from the Stronger With You line. And that's one I like a lot. It's not as strong as Stronger With You intensely, but the performance is still really good. And this fragrance, much like Aerosoto Parfum, big time compliment puller, big time attention grabber. So not a huge surprise to find it in the top five most popular of the year. Maybe the only thing surprising about it is that it's not, again, really easy to find if you're in the United States. So you would think maybe it wouldn't be up there because not as many people have been able to smell it. So we're kicking it off strong and this is a pretty hard choice for me. I like both of these, but if I could pick only one, it would be stronger with you, absolutely. So that's gonna go ahead and put one point in the 2021 column. Now we're on to number four, and this one is a, a pretty good matchup that actually works out really well considering each one of these fragrances. From 2020, it's Dior Homme 2020. This one with Isoe Super and Cashmere, Pink Pepper, a little touch of citrus, a very modern, uh, easy to wear, super versatile, classy, woodsy scent. Uh, obviously got a lot of hate when it first came out and then people started to come around on it for the most part. I'm one of those people, I've talked about it a bunch. I hated on it, the more I wore it, I actually really loved it. So Dior Homme 2020 is the number four most popular release and that's going up against from 2021, H24 from Hermes. See, this one makes sense. Both of these, uh, some people would say, are synthetic and aroma chemically and all that good stuff. So this one makes heavy use of sclarine. It's got this uh, metallic sort of feel to it, green in the opening a bit with sweetness, a uh, little touch of florals as it dries down. Uh, smells a bit like steamed clothing, steamed pressed clothing. Now between these two, for me, it's actually not even close. Dior Homme 2020 all day, every day. I'm not even a really big fan of age 24. Now Dior Homme 2020, yeah, I busted on that, but I came around to it pretty quickly. Age 24, I've given multiple chances throughout the year and I just, 
I don't really like it. I know some people do, some people think it's fantastic, but for me, that's actually one of the biggest disappointments of the year. So Dior on 2020 pretty easily gets the win there. And we're tied up one to one. Number three from 2020, Lome Ideal Extreme from Guerlain. And this is a fantastic release. It's got tobacco, plum, leather, almond, of course, tying it in with all the other Lome Ideal fragrances. Another one that's not really easy to find in the US. It'll pop up sometimes and then sell out, but it's a great fragrance, great release, uh, fantastic in fall and winter, big time compliment puller. And if you're a fan of this line or the house, I think you gotta pick it up. And it's going up against, from this year, Fly Blue Forever. Yeah. Fly Blue Forever is just, it's, it's my stuff. That opening especially, that grapefruit, very rindy, very realistic, sour, tart, sweet, fresh, all at the same time. Love it. As it dries down, it's not quite as exciting as it is in the opening, but it still smells really nice, extremely versatile, easy to wear. And uh, that opening and through the mid is just, just eye-opening for me. So this is, enormously difficult. It's one of those things where I sat there and just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They're both very different. You know, this one, spring and summertime, a casual daytime fragrance. This one more fall and winter and would be just as at home during the evening than during the day. Uh, after a lot of thinking and, and, and thinking and thinking and thinking and going back and forth, I'm gonna go with light blue forever. And that one is just, it's its really difficult for me to choose. Um, so yeah, I love both of them. Number two for 2020, Aqua de Jo Profundo. Yeah, I love this one. It made my uh, top five designer releases of last year. And uh, frankly, I probably should have put it higher on that list. It takes that Aqua de Jo DNA, modernizes it, gives it a little bit of a min mineralic kind of feel. Had a, a hard time getting it out. M -m 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 mineralic. Also has uh, green nuances, green tinges to it. It's a fantastic summertime scent. Love Aqua de Jo Profundo. And that's going up against Lana de Lone Blue Electrique, Yves Saint Laurent, which I also love yeah oh and and these both do a really similar thing they both take uh what is now considered a modern classic fragrance and they tweak it and twist it and change it make it a little more modern because when you spray on blue electric you get that la de loam right away that cardamom punch you pick it up instantly only here it's a little bit fresher and it has a little more pop to it as well i think it's got more versatility it retains that compliment factor which uh, is important to a lot of people that the original had it's a killer scent and this one i legitimately just i couldn't decide honestly i couldn't i thought about making it a tie i'm just saying hey you both of them but ultimately what i did I had my wife decide. So I sprayed this on one tester strip, this on another, went upstairs and uh, had her smell them. She did pick this up as Profundo right away. She was like, that's Profundo, right? And I said, yeah. But she she couldn't pick uh, Blue Electric. She knew she had smelled it. She didn't know exactly what it was though. And she ultimately chose Aqua de Joe. So that one, I, I tapped out. I, I didn't want to make the decision <laughs> because I, I love those both a lot, but she picked Aqua de Joe. So tied two to two. We are at the most popular release for 2020, going up against the most popular from 2021. And on Fragrantica, as of this video, most popular 2020 release is Le Mal Le Parfum. So a little bit of a surprise maybe to see it just creeping up there, getting higher and higher until it's numero uno. And uh, this is another one that I really like. It's <laughs> like Aqua de Jo Profundo, Alana de Lone Blue Electric, taking that classic DNA and reworking it for a modern audience. That's uh, been one of the more popular things to do over the past year or so, it seems. This one also adds in a bit of iris. Uh, it's got that good vanilla, that good vanilla lavender as well. That's a, a great evening fragrance. It smells classy at the same time. It, it's very inviting. It, it's a great release, especially if you like the original Le Mal, but you think maybe it's a little overplayed, a little, a little bit old hat at this point. That one is gonna give you uh, a remembrance 
of that older fragrance only, like I said, brought back to life here. And that one is going up against Sauvage Elixir. Oh boy. Now Sauvage Elixir is one of my favorite releases of the year. It, it's right up there. I mean, La Nuit de Blue, Electrique, Light Blue Forever, those are also some absolute favorites of mine. This one is right there with those. Uh, I would say like even playing field, the only difference is Sauvage Elixir. I would have a little more trouble wearing in more situations than Light Blue Forever or La Nuit de Blue, Electrique. I think it's maybe not quite as versatile as those two just because it has a big punch. Off my skin, this stuff projects heavily it lasts forever and it has a more grown up more mature vibe to it you know it, it harkens back to the 80s a little bit uh, it's got a, a slight 80s masculine feel to it and um you know one spray actually it's my sin of the day today because it's cold outside so it works but one or two sprays on your on your hand you can you know have that down by by your side being wearing nothing else fragrance wise and you'll pick up wafts as you move around it, it is a monster as far as projection goes so this one it's really difficult again the top three were the most difficult the top three matchups um you wear them a lot in the same situations both of them are, are big time confidence boosters for me i love what both of them do but if I were gonna keep only one, I gotta go Sabaja Elixir. It is way more expensive than Lamal Le Parfum. I really like Lamal Le Parfum. I like it a lot. Just your Sabaja Elixir is, is so killer for me. Uh, I love that it's got one foot in the past and one foot in the present. You know, it, it's like this, this huge surprise, or it was for me when it came out. I was expecting something along the lines of Sauvage Parfum, you know? And then it was just out of left field. It doesn't even really smell very much at all like Sauvage, or at least Sauvage Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. And uh, it scratches that itch for me a little bit, <laughs> that retro itch, but with a, a crazily amped up performance compared to most things that are coming out nowadays. And I just really like it a lot. It's just kind of that simple. But La Mala Parfum, also fantastic. Really, really easy to wear. And I would say if you're just talking straight up versatility, La Mala Parfum's more versatile. Some people may not agree with me on that, but I think that um, Sauvage Elixir, you know, you kind of walk that fine line a little bit sometimes with the performance where you maybe spray on a little too much and it's a little overwhelming or if it's uh, a little bit warm outside, it's going to be a bit too much, but the fragrance itself is fantastic. So with Sauvage Elixir getting that W, 2021 pulls it off three to two. But for me, again, this is really difficult. The easiest one was Dior Homme 2020 against H24. A uh, big fan of Dior 2020 in that matchup. Other than that, La Nui versus Aqua de Jo, that's for me basically a toss up. And Lomity All Extreme against Light Blue Forever, that's nearly a toss up as well. And Aero Soda Parfum Stronger with you, absolutely. I like both of those a bunch too. So it's not like that one, you know, one crushed the other. Frankly, in the top five, uh, they're really evenly matched. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Let me know in the comments below which year you think has the stronger lineup. If you just take the top five from each, you don't necessarily have to match them up. Just if you could take the top five from 2020 or the top five from 2021, which top five you taken? All right, guys, it's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.